Well, hello guys. So in the last video, we were able to create our simple spin up our server and which was running on localhost port 4000. And now you can see like I'm being a developer there like a common things like uh, we have everything mentioned in a single file. So we are just going to create a modular structure of code. So instead of this port variable, we can pull it from our environment so that on some, uh, on some part of that we can directly get it from there. Otherwise, we can we can use it from our environment so I'm just gonna get rid of for now from here and within our configuration since we have already installed a package called env I'm gonna bring in config uh, config function from our console our this env package dot env package and then we are gonna create a variable we this config function will give some kind of we'll invoke that config function and will it will give me an object so from that object i'm gonna i'm just interested in this past variable so this will contain all the keys and values of this our environment whatever we will register over here so i'm gonna say for our application port will be our 4000 and this is the application port and now we can access that as a pass.port so from here I'm gonna export a, export some variables export const and this object will contain and this whatever we will define everything will be pulled in from our past variable so that whatever we have it over here so we are pulling our port and as I do this everything is well formatted from my linters and I'm gonna import that so as I do here import from our config and since it is in our index.js file so it will automatically pull it up this file and if I write p you can see that is already here so now if I save it and go to my terminal you can see that our app is still running on full 4000 but since we have changed it we brought in from our environment so we have to rerun this and this time I'm not gonna use integrated terminal and apart from that I'm gonna use this standard Ubuntu terminal you can do whatever you feel like but I will love to do with this one so I'm gonna write npm run start actually run dev and this will start sp spinning up our development script and now you can see that port is still mentioned and picked up from there so if I still go here now we still do not get anything from there and now it's time to go ahead and inject our Apollo middleware that we have that we are gonna look into this now and the way we can do that by simply bringing in our Apollo Express documentation uh, if you don't if you don't have any knowledge about it just go ahead and look for Apollo server Express and this will take you to a github repository that we have over here or even you can go to this npmgs.com and this will provide you better documentation for the basic structured setup so that we have brought in a from Apollo Server Express and then we are just creating injecting our Apollo Server instance and then we are just injecting as a middleware to our app instance that we are, that we are using uh, we are creating using Express so we just have to pass that and then it will start looking for that so installation is pretty simple and we have already installed that package so we just have to bring in from there import and from Apollo Server Express and I'm gonna say look for Apollo Server not Apollo Error Apollo Server and as I do this let's just uh, formatting my code and now just have to create an app instance so I'm gonna say con server equal to new Apollo server and this will take a couple of objects so first field that it takes as a type definitions then second field it takes as a resolver so I'll, I'll explain what are they and the third thing is the context I'll also explain what is context in a while and then we just have to inject it over here so I can simply say inject 
Apollo Silver Metalware on Express application. And as I do this, now we can directly just say server.apply middleware function. Server.apply middleware, and in this, I'm gonna pass app, whatever this app instance is there. And since we are using ES6, so if the name and the value has the same uh, same name, we can directly pass it that way. And as I do this, now you can see I'm just gonna get a weird error over here. Type definitions is not defined. So type definitions, since we, and remember when we when we discussing in the previous video that we when we are going through the doc, diagram, I explained that everything is statically typed over here. So we have to define our type definitions. And you can also look into this documentation that we have on our Node.js, uh, Node.js, npmjs.com. So this is our type definition, and then this is some kind of type. So this is a function that will return some string. So we have to specify that too. And then this is a resolver. So resolvers are basically those functions that are gonna deal with that function. So hello is the name uh, that we defined in our query. And then with that query, we are sending just a simple string. So let me quickly copy just for this thing. And then I'm just gonna get into this. Just gonna paste it over here. And also gonna bring in just GQL from our Apollo server. So here GQL. So this will basically is defining our schema or something like that, but it's working just fine. And as I do this, now you can see that our server started on board this much without any error. So now in a browser, if I go to this slash and point called GraphQL, you can see this GraphQL playground is now started. And this GraphQL here we can, this is a playground where we can test our queries and it provides a lot of documentation too. So since currently we have one query which returns a string from there, and we can also see the schema. So whatever the schema that we wanna create, we can mention those things here. So it's a kind of a documentation, whatever we have on the server defined, it will be automatically pulled up over here for the development purposes. So let's, it's time to ex go and execute a simple query. So we'll simply say query and we'll name it hello. And this will give me hello. So as I write this, you can see that uh, that is automatically. So basically we are calling this query which we have defined over here. And this is running a hello world string. And now if I play, you can see this hello world is there. So let me quickly go to my settings. And instead of font 18, I'm gonna make it to 20. And I'm gonna save it. So this looks quite better and bigger. We can also define our additional parameters like in HTTP headers, if we are dealing with some kind of authorization token or something like that, we can define those things here. Then we have a query variables too. And we can, we'll look into those things later in this video series. So now it's time, I, I don't, since we are going to build a very big project, that means uh, we cannot define everything within a single page. So that's why we are gonna follow this model across the structure uh, code structure and one more thing I will I just want to quickly get into this is within this server Apollo server object we have to pass another we have another parameter optional parameter that's called playground and if we set it to false then we cannot in a production environment in a production environment we cannot we no longer have this access to we we no longer have the access to access this URL and if I reload we cannot see query missing. So we cannot access this in our production environment. So that will be coming from our environment variable over here. So I'm going to simply say mode equal to development. And while you are deploying, you can make it to prod and then look for the value, value over there. So in our past, I'm gonna look for mode and then I'm gonna pass another variable called in prod. equal to mode equal to equal to prod. If it is a prod, not equal to prod, then it will be true. And now we can pull in that there and our main root and we'll pass it 
as a playground parameter. So we can see in prod, and now if I save it, and if I reload it, we are able to see our Apollo GraphQL server. And, and if I go ahead and rename it to prod, so if I say it prod, now if I reload, we have no longer access. Actually, I have to break the server because environment variables need, when we change any environment variable, we have to change, we have to restart the server. So now if I go to my browser and reload it, now we no longer have this, have the access to this. So let me qu quickly revert it back and we'll put it to dev. And let me press Control C and rerun this server. So that's basically it for now. And now let's go ahead and we start creating a query in our configure in our GraphQL folder. So basically, instead of this, I'm going to create a new file called uh, actually a folder. So resolver. And within that, I'm gonna create a new file called index.js, and this folder is there now. So this is our resolver, and I'm also gonna create a new folder called uh, basically type defs. And within that, I'm also gonna create a new folder file called index.js, so this will be our export from there, and then we'll pull it over there, and we'll do a lot of stuff. So I know you, this might be pretty much confusing, but this is a better folder structure, I will say, and I have been following in my production and applications too. So now in our type definition, this is gonna export default uh, GQL string. And to use this thing, we have to firstly bring it from our Apollo server. So we are gonna bring in our GQL from Actually, this wouldn't be this. We'll be exporting a default array from here and from our Apollo Server Express. And as I do this, this will be our export default from there. And the same way in our index.js, this is gonna be exporting default an array. And later we'll look into what kind of array that we are gonna use that. And now once they are exported from there, we are gonna import resolvers from our resolver folder. So it will automatically pull up this index.js file that we have there and receive that export default statement. And also I'm gonna import our this type depths from our type definition. So it will also automatically pull up this thing that we have this type definition index and then we are going to export default so export default type definitions and resolvers and now we're going to receive that in our main entry point of the application that's our not this one not in this one too and as I do this, we'll get, we are gonna get an error. So instead of these variables, I'm just gonna get rid of these two. And I'm gonna import from our, this GraphQL. And we'll simply say resolvers. So you can see that has been automatically pulled up and type defs. And now we, we are just just applying it to our Apollo server variable that we have created and as I do this you can simply say our you will find a weird error that app has crashed and that's because we we have exported a default empty and nothing is inside and by default you should have something there inside our type definitions or the resolvers in order to access them and now what you can do in our type definitions I'm gonna in our in our type definition folder I'm gonna create a new file I'm gonna name it as a root.js or simply I'm gonna say base def so this will be containing our base definition and I'm gonna import our GQL from 
So basically this is a GraphQL query language parameter and whatever we will inside that that will be treated as a Graph GraphQL query. So from our Apollo server and this will export default and that will export this GQL language and this since it is our root will say type query and then also type actually for now mutation that's fine for us and within that query whatever let's create our hello function and this will return a string and that should not be null since it is a statically typed and same we'll do in our resolvers I'm gonna create a new file called Mm, for now let's say post.js actually let me rename it to post.js and this will export default function and within that function it will have a parameter called query and with that hello function we can use arrow function and we'll return something called hello from graphql and we are not done yet we have to register in our root so we'll import our post from our post that we have inside the same directory and then we'll pass it over there so we'll simply say post and the same we we'll have to do over here so whatever we have defined there we have to simply import that base defs from our in the same directory base devs and then we have to export it there and as I save it okay this will yeah actually here we don't need this import statement and as I do this now you can see that has still that has created exported name type definitions so we have to see why are we getting that So from our index.js base definitions and we are exporting our array. Yeah, I forgot to do just a bit of markup. So by default that query has to first of all take a parameter and that should be string. And the same we have to do with our type mutations. So since it is a root we have to pass it that so everything whatever we'll send that has to be our query then we can also listen for subs subscriptions and subscriptions I'm also learning so I cannot talk much about that in this video but I can teach you about directives how you can create those custom directives throughout this video series and now if I save it we are still get thing. we are still getting that thing so GraphQL doesn't provide name export named type definitions so in our type exporting a default object from there and this is going getting into this one type definitions folder and from there we are just exporting default this mm -hmm. that's weird query graphql and let me check so in our graphql we don't have that thing type definitions type defs it should automatically pick up from there actually I think We are exporting an object. Okay, so instead of that, we'll simply say export type depths as 
type devs but it should automatically pick it up for their export default so save it let's check if we have that thing since we have already imported that we should automatically get it from there and there's something wrong with my code I think from the same directory resolvers we get into type depths base definition mutation string that's fine for us and it's just looks fine okay so I think there's some weird issue going on something is very fishy and that will just gonna debug that so from our GraphQL we are pulling up we are going to this index.js file okay so what I'm gonna do let's put a console log state statement and see type devs what do we have there and now I'm gonna save that let's see what happens behind the scene index.js doesn't provide an export name type definitions from there so that's basically what this what's wrong with this one we have export default in this array from their type based definitions and from that base definitions whatever is exported from there we are just pulling it from there let's put it index.js so I think something is not wrong something is something went wrong now if I save it GraphQL doesn't provide an export name okay so this is fishy type def is declared but let's see what do we have inside that okay I think export const and let's say type depths as well as our resolvers okay so we were default exporting it from our that thing and export const now this should work fine import not actually const import our from type definitions okay, let's see what do we have there <laughs> that's weird okay so what I'm gonna do is export type depths from as type depths from our whatever we have here and the same I'm gonna do with the resolvers so this will get into the resolvers and install this type depths so We're exporting it still we are getting some error okay 
to leave it instead of this index.js file I'm going to get rid of this and inside of type definitions I think instead of bringing our from our this thing we'll bring it as a default from GraphQL our type definitions and same we are going to do with our this thing later we'll if we come back to this part so I'm going to say resolver resolvers now if I save it this should work just fine and now you can see we have no issues with our code so I'll get into this part later in the video but for now this is just gonna work for fine us this is not gonna stop us this was very simple error module export error and now you can see our terminal uh, in our terminal we can see that it's running on port 4000 and also we are able to access our this query hello query that we have created in our browser so we can go to our browser and let me reload it that playground is ready and now for a run we get our hello back so only the setup is very hard in here and everything is like a, then everything is just like a cakewalk so instead of this base definitions everything inside are having inside our base definitions I'm gonna get rid of this part so that so that from our queries uh, everything is like modular structure follows modular structure post post.js and in our index I'm gonna bring it up from there so import post from our post that we have created and then here we are going to define the schema for the post so for that we need a GraphQL query language so we have to bring in GQL from Apollo Server Express and then expo default statement with a GQL and then it will also take type query and actually this won't be direct so we can we have to extend first whatever we have defined from our in our base base definition and we'll simply say query and now if I save it paste that hello world and now if I save it you can see everything is running fine on a server hello say fine and resolve but not in schema so we haven't register that thing over here so we just have to provide into our post and now if I save it and you can see there is no issue if I go ahead and run this we still have that data so that's basically it about this video in the next video we'll start looking how we can start creating our post and a lot of other cool stuff so thank you guys stay tuned with my channel and I really appreciate your effort you are learning this course and that is going to help us a lot in order to grow our channel. Keep on supporting, keep on spreading our words. And thank you guys. We'll get back in our next video.